We've been talking about even the end time and the time and the season that we believe we are in. We said many things will happen out there. Yes, my brother, my sister, the world will be shaken. Heavens and earth will be shaken. And if my heart is in the world, my heart will be shaken. And may God in His grace help us to understand the shaking so that our flesh is shaken out in Jesus' name. Amen. We said that for the church, how many times Jesus would say, watch and pray, watch and pray, watch and pray. Give attention and remember, I've told you this before the time. Because there's certain things God wants us to remember if we are wise virgins and wise builders for the season laying ahead and even the season that we are in. It's a time where fear and the demonic forces of fear can be so excited to think that they can establish demonic strongholds of fear in nations where people, so many people out of fear move a lot of billions and billions and billions of dollars even in wars and, and things that are happening but everything will be shaken but by God's grace may the church rise up in maturity where it's not about themselves but they will bring in the nations for God Amen nations as an inheritance at his feet so be it may God use you in a very unique way in Jesus name but for the church there's two words that stand out even from different passages that there will be fire and the fire will be in the sense of destruction but if the fire same fire for the purification of the bride for the girl to shine forth everybody say purification. purification but both will happen there will be destruction out in the world and therefore those who are walking with christ saying it's all about him there will be purification and then there will be a uh, i even want to say a hell of a lot of pressure out there but in the world there will be a hell of a lot of pressure if i can say that but in the church there will be a birthing birth pangs and pressure pressure for destruction and birth pangs for the birthing of the church of christ a fire for purification and a fire for destruction how will you interpret it tomorrow my brother my sister if in a very simpler smallish way god is coming through his fire where love can be a fire and it must be a fire that will not destroy us not the love out there in the world that is called lust that will consume you that will destroy you but a fire that will purify you with a love that is innocent with a love that is pure with a love that is beautiful and the bride will come to know this love more and more and more and more the bride will come to know this love and at the same time the bride will come to know him 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 the church more and more will there will be foundations foundations for the children of god there will be more foundations and foundations and the two things main things that will come forth from hell against you and against me against the church will be deception deception therefore don't be foolish don't be stupid buy or build the foundation with a word build the foundation with a word build the foundation with a word and you will not be deceived you will not be deceived but the other one is a love that will grow cold read with me first scripture anytime now there we go <laughs> Matthew 24, from verse 12. Because of the increase of wickedness. Now, other translation, translations, lawlessness. Because of the increase, the increase of lawlessness, the love of most will grow cold. Everybody say, grow cold. Just the previous verse. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Talking about a lot of things that will happen about the wars and the rumors of wars and the earthquakes and the famines and various in various places, the beginning of birth pains. A lot of things that will happen. But then talking, looking at you and me, talking to, to the church, saying that deception will come and a love that will grow cold. A love that will grow cold. 
Deception, no, you will build the foundation. You will build the foundation. Love, the love of the bride will become more pure, more pure, more pure. In the context of an attack on the love that is burning in you. There will be an attack from hell against the love that is burning in you. But God has overcome. Whatever is coming from hell, the love in you is called Jesus Christ. And he has overcome the world. Hello? But if you have the wisdom to surrender to him, if you have that intimate love relationship with him, if you have this relationship with love, hello? Then you will stand strong. And whatever is happening out there in the world will bring forth more beauty in you. The beauty in his love. The foundation in his word. Foundation in his word not to be deceived. Beauty in his love that nothing will grow cold in you. Both will happen. And by God's grace, he will help us how to deal with it. And then another scripture. 2 Timothy 3, verse 1 to 4. Please go with me. Get a Bible that you can mark in, bring a pen or something. And uh, if you cannot mark in your Bible, come to me, I will buy you one. But, uh, but get a Bible that you can write in what God is saying to you and give that as a gift to your children or grandchildren. They will know what God said to Grandpa, what God said to Grandma, and it will be a piece of gold in their hands. 2 Timothy 3, but mark this, give attention to this, watch this. Guys, please go and see in the word how many times Jesus said, watch this, look at this, be careful, watch and pray. And there were specific, specific messages that went with that. Mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. How encouraging. People will be lovers. Oh, we're talking about love. Lovers of themselves. Lovers of money. Boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents. Ungrateful, unholy, without love, once again. Unforgiving, slanderous, with self-control, brutal, not, not lovers of the good. Treacherous, rash, rash. What? Maximusu. Conceited. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. In essence, the essence of everything, love. All these things happen, all these things. Then three remain, hope, faith, and love. And the greatest, love. Greatest commandment, love. So my brother, how will my love grow cold? Not just by me, not feeling a passion for God. It's not about me. Not feeling that passion anymore for God. Now my love has grown cold. No, it's for me replacing that love with some other love that is all about me. Where I love the selfish love for me, love for the money, love for that. And you know, the true opposite of love is fear. As we will see even later, it's perfect love that drives out fear. So if I have a love for money, it's not like you go and everybody see you and you say, I have a love for money. Rubbish. It manifests many times through fear. When there's a love more for money than a love for God, then fear will be present. If you want to see if there's a love for money and love for yourself more than a love for God, look at how you deal with the budget, with the challenges, with the finances, with all those stuff. And it will tell you, if you're walking with a love that is warm in God's presence, or a love that has grown cold. Love that has grown cold manifests in your life many times with a thing of, there's a fear working, or I can hear the word, but there's no, no it doesn't touch me. You can think, what touched me this past week? What touched you this past month? Where did you saw a reaction in you? Where did you see a, an excitement? Where did you see a, re, a negative reaction? Where did you see anger? Where you saw real frustration? Where did you see all of that? And then think how many times in the past week did you really had a reaction to the word of God with love? 
I'm not talking about emotional tantrum or turmoil or whatever. But when last could you experience how your spirit with excitement respond to the word of God? You need to get into that place. If it's not there, somewhere there's a coldness in your love towards God. And the enemy is setting you up for the end times to be part of the product of the shaking instead of understanding how to be purified in the fire and how to bring forth through prayer and faith and expectation that what is from him. And the baby is there, but some of these women that gave birth will tell you they just didn't, didn't sing a praise song, hallelujah, and then boop, there's the baby. But for un some fault, unfortunate reasons, sometimes we think it must be so in our walk with God, if we have the faith. It will just, oh, hallelujah, no, hallelujah, and boop, and there's the baby. Some birth pangs is something else. Maybe we might get three ladies to give us in detail what they experience. No, rather not, hey. So what am I saying, my brother, my sister? If you're going to want to go for God's love, if you want to make sure your love will not grow cold in the end time, because hell will be exposed and there will be emotions. Come on, look at the guys in the streets. Look at how many people will stand and even give their life, but they come out with passion to believe the most ridiculous stuff out there in the world. But where's the passion of the church? Not to go and stand in the streets in the name of the demon of religion to judge everybody. No. But to stand in the passion that is from him. May God help us all. May God help us all. But go and stand in your emotions first of all. Because you, before you stand in the street. Stand in your emotions. Stand in that mindset that is not from God. Stand in that relationship that where you don't, where you compromise. Hello? How will we compromise? I compromise by allowing fear. I compromise by allowing the anxiety. I compromise by allowing the stress. I compromise by just carrying on. But when the word is spoken, it does not, I don't experience the resonating with my spirit. Then I know the love is just, oh, it's silent here with the love of God. Intellectually, religiously, I can hear and I agree and it's, it's good. And if I'm really spiritual, I will not fall asleep in the church. Even. And here, then I come awake. When there's things that I must do, things how things must work. I love that will grow cold. Because some other thing, I'm putting that warmth, that capacity into that rubbish. God's going to help us in Jesus' name. Are you with me? Okay, there we go. Write down 10 points up, please. It's going to be quick. If I, uh, one of these days when I see they are not writing down, I'm going to repeat, repeat, repeat till they write down. Is that a good one? Hmm, Ruan, scribe. I will not say names. Right, first point loyalty. Loyalty. Love is not a feeling, it's an act of your will. You've heard that one. First of all, godly love is part of a choice. It was for the joy set before him, he went to the cross, but he made the choice. But he made the choice. Father, Son, Holy Spirit made, made the choice. Are you with me? So my brother, my sister, loyalty. Loyalty is a choice many times. When your wife wants to slaughter you and you want to walk away and this wants to happen there and that, da, 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 da. then it's a choice to be loyal. You will stand in loyalty. You will not commit adultery. And adultery is not with a woman that needs a lot of men. Adultery is I can commit adultery by running in all this other thingies, thingamagolies that can give me fulfillment. I'm not just talking about pornography. I can find it in cars. I can find it in money. I can find it in business. I can find all the alternatives. It's because there's not a love. Now there's a passion with the cars, a passion with the business. Ah, there must be. But as you do it for the Lord, in love. Hello? Are you still with me? But here, 
There must be a loyalty. So first of all, when he says in Revelation 2 verse 4, to the end time church, I have it against you that you forsook, forsake your first love. That you turned away from the first love. And that first love is that love that is pure. That love that was there before there was a word beginning. God create the word beginning and end for the sake of me and you to have a concept of time, to have a concept of the beginning of life and the end of life. But before the concept of beginning and end, there was love. God was before the beginning. Are you with me? But from that place, from that love that was there before the beginning, you need to get back to that love. Get back. And that is a choice. I choose not to walk in that fear. I choose not to walk in that selfish thing. I choose not to entertain my thoughts and my reasoning. I choose certain things. Oh, guys, when, when sometimes we really fail. But praise God for the blood. Praise God for the grace that we can run back to Him, man. Get back. Get back to that place where love is beautiful. Where the passion in you can be clean. Where the energy and the driving force in you can be beautiful. That his motivation will be your motivation. Your motivation will be his motivation. Hello. That's that place of the first love. God says, I have it against you. That you're not excited what I'm excited about. That you're not passionate what I'm passionate about. That you are not motivated by what I'm motivated with. And that is love. Let's get back in that place. Amen. As you said there in repentance. Loyalty. A choice. Secondly, obedience. John 14 verse 23. The core scripture that God gave me when we planted the church. Our father's home. That scripture says, if somebody loves me, he will obey my teaching. My father will love him. And we, we will come, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we will come and make our home with him. See, God, what's the essence of the church? God said that I must be welcome. I must be able to make my home. Whatever you build, I need to be welcome there. And may that be so for each one of our lives, even you guys becoming members, that is the core of the vision. That you'll build your life, your relationships, your future in such a way that your father will be welcome. And he will call your life his home. Amen. Please. Please, let us understand. But, but the obedience, if you love me, you'll obey me. Like we said in the past, it didn't work. You tell your wife, if you love me, you'll bring me breakfast in bed. Oh, man. Danger, danger, dangerous ground. <laughs> uh, hello. No, it's not a manipulation trick. What is God saying? Remember what we said? If you love me, you'll obey my teaching. God says, if you have this high standard of love, if you have this quality love that is not cheap, the ingredient in that love will be obedience. The other side of the coin will be obedience. Because there's no cheap love. If you want me to come and live with you, make my home with you, you will walk in a love that is not cheap. A love that is clean. And you will see that it's clean. You will see that it's not cheap. You will see that you have a richness and a quality love in you when you see that in the name of that love you obey my teaching. Ah, are you with me? That you will obey my teaching. Keep my commandments. But in with a few translations, um, Afrikaans says, "May geboye onderhou." Give me that English. I will keep, keep your commandments. My brother, my sister, in obedience, it's not too many times. Some of you young people, twenty years ago, you thought like this: obedience is I'm in trouble or I'm not in trouble. I'm in trouble or I'm not in trouble. I will obey because I must do the right thing. That is you and the snake and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. I must do the right thing, not the wrong thing. 
But obedience, my brother, my sister, is a gift. Obedience is an expression God has given you to respond to Him with love. How must I love God? How must I love God? God is giving you an expression, and that is obedience. If you want to love me, let me show you how you can love me. By being obedient. So obedience is not do the right thing or the wrong thing. Obedience is an expression of love, an expression of respect, an expression in a relationship. Where God gives you the option to respond in relationship. God gives you the, the option to respond in love. How do I respond in love? By getting a feeling in my emotion that I love him. Not at all. Obedience is an opportunity. Everybody say, obedience is an opportunity. And a gift. For a relationship. Okay. So come on, man. How must we? Flesh does not know how to respond to the living God. To the God of this universe, your flesh, my flesh, we cannot contain him. We cannot think even, even start to think. But one of the expressions how to relate is obedience. What did you do when you gave your life to Christ? You obeyed the Holy Spirit that opened up the word and said, Your Father, your God so loved you that he gave his only begotten Son, so that if you believe in him, you will not perish, but have eternal life. What did you do? Through the Holy Spirit, you obeyed. And gave your life to him. Praise God for the gift, for the expression of obedience. Keep the concept of obedience. Keep my commandments. Not just do as I say. Not just do as I say. When I command you, do as I say. No. Keep it in your heart. Keep it as a principle. As a response. That's about love. So, first of all, you choose loyalty. To get back into that love that is, that is alive. Because it's called God. But secondly, understand what he has given you through obedience. To get back into that place. Start to obey the word. That means I respond accurately to the word. I respond accurately to the word. And that is called obedience. Write that down. An accurate response to the word of God. That is called obedience. An accurate response to the word of God. Okay, number three, discipline. What's happening within you? What's happening within you, my brother, my sister? In here, deception. In here, love that grow cold. No, not in Jesus' name. Because the essence of new covenant, seen in Ezekiel, seen in Jeremiah, seen in Hebrews, in so many places, the essence of the new covenant, I will come and I will write my laws, my principles in your heart and in your mind, so that in your heart you grow, your love will not grow cold. In your mind, you will not be deceived. That is now in context of Jesus' word in the New Testament. So no, 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 you have a promise. You get into the word, God promised he will write the laws in here and in here. Are you with me? Discipline. Oh, discipline. So first is a choice in loyalty. Secondly is a choice in understanding the gift of obedience. Thirdly is discipline. So this is not yet even nearly coming into the feeling of I feel loved by God and I feel that I'm loving him. This is not near that necessarily. The proof in the pudding is not the feeling. The proof in the pudding is the loyalty, the obedience, the discipline. Hello. Now we see in the word, Revelation 3, 19, in number 3. Revelation 3, 19. Last letter to the seven churches in the end time. One that is what the Father says. He says, this is right, this is wrong, this is right, this is wrong. And then he explains his heart. Before verse 20, of knocking at the door for intimacy. He says, understand that everyone that I love, I discipline. Understand the heart. Otherwise, you will not come into intimacy. You need to understand God's love. So when I go into moaning and groaning... 
I'm not respecting his heart. I'm not respecting his motives. Because if I know his motive, you won't believe it. When you trust God's motive, when you don't question his motive, when you don't, don't put a question mark behind his motive, that's when murmuring come in. That's where the negativity and the moaning and the groaning come in. And I say, I'm just, I say, I'm just sharing my heart. Okay, you're sharing a lot of rubbish. This in your heart. Just confess it then. Put it out there, but confess it and get rid of it. <laughs> Hello? Because if I understand his motive, then it can be James 1. Count it all joy, pure joy. Not the Jews. But count it pure joy when you fall in various trials and various shaking and various... Because you know God's motive. Because you know God has only the best for you, even if you don't understand it today. You receive the discipline because you know your father is consumed with his love for you. Why the hurt with earthly dads? Because we questioned a lot of things, and they were human beings. Even fathers here, me, you, we make mistakes, man. Come on, because we are human beings. Are you with me? And then the child can question the motive. Why did dad do that? Why did dad say that? Why did he become so angry? Why did he say that stuff to me? Hello? You know what I'm talking about. But we cannot do that with God. Guys, if you want to get back into the first love and your love for God will not grow cold, that you will hear a word, but it doesn't resonate with your spirit. It does not do anything. You can pray, but it does not do anything except make you sleepy. Not us, other people. But, uh, hello? But if I'm back in my first love, when I'm in the Word, when I'm with God, when I see God in nature, when I open my mouth, when I worship Him, there's something happening. There's something happening. Discipline. So honor your father. Because even Hebrews 12, hey, you remember? Every child is with discipline. God says, if you're an illegitimate child, then there's no discipline. But God honors you, honors you that you are not a fake child, that you are not fake, but that you are a genuine child of him. Therefore, he respects you as a genuine child and give you discipline. And now you respect him as your father and receive the discipline. But know that it's all in the context that he has an excellent plan with your life. And he is consumed for an intimate relationship with you. You're still here? That's number three. Number four. Give everything. John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave. Everybody say, so loved. God so loved that he gave everything. He's only begotten son so that everybody who lives in him will not perish but have eternal life. In this quality love, my brother and my sister, you can play the flirting game with the flesh, the flirting game with demons. You can have intimacy with demons, children of God. But if the flirting game is over, there's a place where God in his love expects everything of me. So you want to walk in your first love, you need to give everything. That doesn't mean you must be perfect. It means in your attitude, in your faith, in your surrendering, in your prayer, in your worship. You push to say, to pray, to, to declare that God, my everything, my everything, my everything for you and for you alone. Amen. That is it. And then you will experience more and more that first love. That you will be consumed with that. Let it be so. Number five. Show God's heart. 1 John 4 verse 9 to 10. A lot of rubbish is shown out there. A lot of rubbish. A lot of rubbish is shown out there. With things happening. A lot of destruction. A lot of things that you can say. Deception that you cannot believe. That people can start to be so deceived. To think that is a human right. And that is a thing to stand for. This is a thing to go through the streets. Certain things that people can do, but if somebody will stand before abortion clinic and pray, 
that they can even arrest you. What happened in the one case? No man, no man. He's just showing you end time is here and it's time to position yourself accurate as not a foolish but a wise virgin. Show God's heart. 1 John 4 verse 9 and 10. If we say we follow God, we will love one another. And there it says, God is love. Now my brother, my sister, 2 Corinthians 5, you're called as an ambassador of Christ. When people look, people look at you, they must see him. More of him, that means more of his love and less of me. Less of my way of thinking and my passion for my future, but more of him. And he, you will stand amazed of, at what he has for your future. If you surrender, if you surrender to him. For God is love. He will show you his heart, but people need to see it through the church. Number six, facilitate relationship. 1 John 4, 20. Facilitate. Love is there to facilitate relationship. More and more to get into relationship. More and more. What does that verse say? Verse 19 also. Verse 19 and 20. Just verse 18, it said, perfect love drives out all fear. And then, then he talks about the wara wara with brothers and sisters. He says, if you say that you love God, but you hate your brother, you're a liar. Tell your neighbor, don't be a liar. <laughs> okay, don't say that to your wife, she will beat you up. <laughs> what am I saying? Oh, man. God says, if you want to know that you love me, look at how you love others around you. If you want to see the genuineness of an unselfish love for God, look at the genuineness, unselfish love that you have for people around you. And if you see nothing of that, just know your love for God is cold. There is not. Otherwise you say, no, I have a love for God. The word says, you're a liar. You're a liar. You can be so spiritually, so demonically spiritually. And then you see you are totally one side and you get all these revelations from where on earth? If the revelation don't lead you into accurate living, then from where did that revelation come? Be careful. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived out of relationships. But when you are accurate, then what you find in teaching will lead you into trusting more, into finding less excuses to be involved with people, less excuses to open your heart, less excuses to serve others, not if they say thank you and don't walk over you. They cannot walk over you. It's only your flesh and deception that can walk over you. People cannot walk over you. They walk over you. People, they will f catch that guy and say, are oh, you crazy? Are you with me? Or physically? Yeah. Facilitate relationship. God is giving you a, what's a barometer? Parameter. A, a thing. <laughs> to, to see is your life, is your love pure or fake? And God, one of the things, see, I will help you so that you will know if your love is pure towards me. If you see you have a love for people around you, then you know you're getting back into that love for me. I'm not talking about a love because I'm involved with people so that I can get acceptance through my performance. That is the yoke of a curse of slavery where I'm fear. Now I must be in with my friends. I'm not talking about Jesus. I must be in at the school, you know, because I'm now the cool dude. Uh, cool dude. You're a sucker in that sense. And, and demons are laughing at you, man. They're eating their popcorn while looking at you. You're the comedy. You know? Not one of you guys in Jesus' name. <laughs> Not anymore, in any case. I don't say get one side and, and judge others. That's, that's demonic. 
No, but man, coming to the place that people can see, that guy is genuine. That guy is genuine. That one day when that guy is going through hell, he knows he can phone you. He knows he can phone you. Are you with me? I gave a word to this one family. They had muscle sport. And I just went to this guy and his wife and two kids, and I gave him a word. It was a little bit intense, not judgment, but intense. Three years later, I just gave it on a piece of paper that I borrowed from the guy there in the cafeteria. Wrote my number. He kept that thing somewhere, I don't know. Three years later, no, we are really in a situation. And he remember what happened in our encounter of one or two minutes. And he felt, because he wasn't walking with God at that stage. They came together to the Lord. The son came to Kriari even full time for a year or two. The daughters, she became passionate with, with Down. She even started to give classes while she was in school. She came to the Lord. They, were, they are now in the church after being all over again at other church but we started to walk a road 14 years ago but what I'm saying is when you can put it out there what you have even if you must put it on a piece of paper are you with me do it man I'm looking at this car this is now nearly 30 years ago getting older 30 years ago working in Pretoria and uh, going home and I saw this very nice car and God said to me I've spoken to him not to give the car to you I've spoken to him and he's not obeying me oh, while looking at the car so went into the place one shop asked for paper and a pen God spoke to you and you're not obeying him why not question mark and my phone number put it there in the Rain wiper. What is this thing here? Just wiper, yeah. And, uh, but those days, it were the apartheid days. <laughs> and I was living in the center of Pretoria. And um, some uh, guy, the best of both, like they, some call themselves like that, the color, a colored guy, he had to come for ministry things. And I said, no, 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 no. I'm in a block of flats where they said the only whites allowed. I said, you come and stay here. Finish. And later we heard that the Avia beer <laughs> is looking for us. I said, we're going to make a statement. Luckily, I served the Lord. Otherwise, maybe I would have been an activist. Or I don't know what. But you stay here. And that evening, after we heard that, there was a knock on the door. And when they, I opened the door, it was just three big guys. First thought was Avia beer. <sighs> Lord, help us. And praise the Lord, next moment he took out the paper and he said, what is this? <laughs> About what, the message that I put on the car. Hello. And I put on the car and in the end, those three guys they came in. And after an hour or more longer, all three gave their lives to Christ, prayed for them. They even fell over here halfway in the kitchen and we lived in a small place. And afterwards, I always said, I will never fall. <laughs> he was in some charismatic church, his parents. And God just did this amazing thing. Guys, and I just looked at the car that was nice. But be sensitive, be sensitive, be sensitive in the spirit. Do life with God. Amen. And that night, the prayers of, of a few mothers were answered with three guys that just were totally shocked in what God said to them and surrendered their lives. Ah, can we do that? Facilitate relationship. Man, God wanted to love and compel you. Love will compel you. It will force you. There's a ten, uh, uh, ingredient of to be forced. If I can say like that, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 14, the word says, don't be a slave of sin, but a slave of the truth. Yes. And when you are having this, life, this love, it will, you will be driven by love. 
die liefde zal jou dring, die liefde zal jou dwing. In 2 Corinthians 5. So what is the compelling force in you? Is it sometimes anger when you are really fed up? Hey, I saw some stuff in my life. Oh man, God must help us. Amen. But you want to get back into the love that is alive. The love that is burning in you. Not like your love growing cold, especially more in the end time. Open your mouth and speak in the name of love. Be driven by his love, not driven by bitterness. Come on, you can see people with bitterness. You know, when they are there far, they are really driven by bitterness. You can see that demonic thing over them. You can see that guy in his face, this bitterness. You can see sometimes an issue in somebody's face. But let it not be so. Let they see the glory and the beauty of God and his love when they're looking at you. Amen. When they look in your eyes, they know that there's a God that loves me. There's a God that believes in me. There's a God that has a future for me. When they look in your eyes, you haven't opened your mouth. Pray that God will touch you in such a way. But for that, your eyes must look into the word in a certain way, through the eyes of the Holy Spirit, that it opens up. And inside, the love is just there. You know that that guy, he just fell in love. You know, they all... Paint the stars, you know, all these sterikis that you come and they just say, No, he, that guy is gone. You, know, you can do nothing with him now. You never saw that before. John Dean, yeah, I've seen that with him. <laughs> they were pointing the finger. Um, okay, are, are you here? I was in a, in a, why I tell stories? Oh, because you have an extra hour. Okay. Great. Um, I was in the army and was singing this gospel um, band, but the guys before me, they told me the story about this one guy who met his wife. He was saying, they were singing in uh, some other youth, big youth group. <laughs> and they were singing, and they were singing this song, um, very old song, maybe some of you remember it. There is no love. No, no. There is no words to tell you how I love you. They are. They are no words. So we saw this girl. This is like in a comedy, but this is the truth. The truth. So there's like four verses. One, two, three, four, 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 four. Sixteen sentences. There are no words. Blah, 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 blah. But this guy, in the first line, he saw this girl. And he was looking at her. He was saying, There are no words. There are no words. He sang all 16 lines, just with there are no words. But they, <laughs> literally, I know God has a sense of humor. You know how that guy met his wife. Now that is like, I want to say there are no words. God must give you the words. Guys, when you're really in love with him, when you're really in love with him, you will speak this word in a certain way. You will speak in a, uh, this word in a certain way when you are in love. Amen. Right, number eight. Finishing off. Love will give substance to intimacy. Guys, you can have a lot of cheap. You can have cheap intimacy through pornography. You can have cheap intimacy with entertaining your own thoughts. You can have cheap intimacy with a very cheap lady. A lady that is very afraid. She needs a lot of men around her. Yeah. No, there's a quality in intimacy. And that quality in intimacy is when you understand when it's with God. But intimacy with yourself, intimacy with your work, I don't have time to have time with God now. No, it's the Buddha discipline that you will have that time with the word, have that time in prayer. I don't have the time. Why? Because you're intimate with rabbis. Your intimacy is cheap. Cheap. Because it's with your job, with your studies, with some friends, with this, with this, with this, with this. But the depth of those relationships, it starts with a quality, with a love that is alive. Let's say, the love in me will be alive. Okay. Allow God to be himself. Allow God to be himself in your life. And he is love. 
Allow the passion of heaven to come through you. The passion is God himself. Let's say the passion of heaven will be alive in me. Let it be so. In Jesus' name. Give, give substance to intimacy. Number nine. Cast out slavery. My brother, my sister, you will be under the yoke of slavery. That's it. Unless it's cast out. Not by you yourself. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now I want to say something. Maybe it's controversial. I don't know. If I say... Huh. In, in the name of in the name of that plant, then you're gonna say, okay, but what is the name? In the name of brother, but the brother has a name. So I'm supposed to say in the name Jesus. In not in the name of Jesus. If I say in the name of, and don't quote me in the wrong way. <laughs> when I would say, in the name of Jesus means Jesus has a name. In the name of Jesus. What is the name of Jesus then? In the name of that human being. In the name of that car. There's a million names to describe who Jesus is. Amen. When you say in the name of Jesus, you, you summarize a million names in one. In the name of the one that is more than enough, El Shaddai. In the name of the one that will provide. In the name of the good shepherd. In the name of the good shepherd. In the name of the light, way, the truth, and the life. Hello, hello. Go on, go on, go on, go on forever. Forever. But in his name, everything else must submit. But the spirit of slavery is every other demonic force or spirit that is not from heaven. That's the opposite. God has not given us a spirit of fear. Fear, but of love, power, and sound mind. Okay. And then Romans 8, you have a spirit of adoption. Not the spirit to fear again. Not the spirit, you have not received the spirit of slavery to fear again. Because fear and slavery combined. But opposite of fear is love. So love and freedom combined, fear and slavery combined. You want freedom, understand love and come in this love relationship. Because truth without relationship is the letter of the law that will kill you. Only in the context of relationship with the Holy Spirit, you get into this word and you find Christ in a relationship when, when you find the word. Amen. Don't relate with the word. Don't be involved with the word if it's not from a place of relationship. Because the word is dangerous. Cast out the slavery. Love will cast out the slavery. Because perfect love drives out all fear. Slavery has to do with fear. You want to become a free man? Make sure that love is alive in you. Your love grown cold means immediately you are under a yoke of slavery somewhere in some or other thing. It's either the one or the other. There's not an in-between. There's only two sides of the coin. Number 10, last one. Working of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit is working in you, there can be the gifts, my brother, my sister, and that's great. We must drive out devils. We must see healings more and more and more. We must we'll see miracles in the end time also. In very intense ways. That's in that working. That's John 14 verse 12. The works that I do, you will also do, Jesus said. And even greater works than this you will do that prophecy that word is not fulfilled yet greater works than walking on the water greater works than the five thousand seven thousand that will eat god will supply god's going to do amazing things amazing things amazing things many people will see but will still not serve him 
may you see and still serve. May, you, may what you see of God will always lead you to serving Him. To see and serve. See and serve. Working of the Holy Spirit in you. Galatians 5.22, that's the fruit of the Spirit. Fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, all those stuff, faithfulness, self-control, all of that. The working, if you allow the Holy Spirit, my brother, love will be there. So if you're in that place and you feel your love is cold, just know you need to ask Holy Spirit to come and work in you. Don't touch the Word without Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, open my eyes so that I can see you. You know, there was a year when I studied still medicine. I just gave my life to Christ, but I was a religious like it. Don't, don't want to say. But for some reason in Heilbronn, where my parents were, that December, the three weeks that I was there, praise God for His grace. I just felt every evening to go to the dam. And sit there and say, Holy Spirit, this year I want to know you. This year I want to know you. Said it three times and go back. More than 20 times, just go there, sit for five minutes or two minutes, and just say, Holy Spirit, this year I want to come to know you. And then stand up and go back. That year, I was baptized. I was baptized in the Spirit. I received the calling. I left medical school. I went into a lot of things and God has set me from a lot of other rabbis also. That was the one year. <laughs> and uh, not a trick, but a desire. Yeah. Let it be a desire in your life. Pray that man. Pray that frequently and frequently and frequently. To say, God, I want to come to know you through the Spirit. If it's not the Spirit, it's dangerous. If it's not the Spirit of God, that's a fire. But the the consuming fire must deal with fire. In a different context, they always say, fight fire with fire. Hey, out there. But that is, in a spiritual context, a thousand times more seriously accurate. Fight the destructive fire of lust, of fear, of intimidation, of compromise, of whatever those stuff. Those destructive fires in you, the fire of bitterness, unforgiveness, judgment, religion, and all those chachas. Fight that fire with the fire of the Holy Spirit. He's a consuming fire. But in that fire, you have respect for Him. In that fire, the fear of God is there. But the fear of God will drive out all that other fears. You with me? May God help you. May God help you. In Romans 5, 5, that is... Oh, there's a hope that God has given us. Why? Because the love, love, love of God is poured out by the Holy Spirit in your heart. Poured out by the Holy Spirit in your heart. But it's not just praying this prayer. These other facets, look at them, please. All these ten facets, look at them. It's not just praying a prayer, ATM prayer, and pfft, it must throw out the cash and there you go. No, it's a relationship. And you don't have a relationship with the ATM. Uh, are you with me? So with that Romans 5, uh, give your neighbor a high five. If you don't want to give you a high five, just smack him. Okay. Now my brother, I want to tell you, remember the high five. It's God himself, God himself pouring out. Not dripple key, dripple key. Pouring out. His love into your heart. He, what does that mean? He's so ready. He's so ready. He's so ready to bring His passion in you. To pour out His passion in you. To pour out the energy, the motivation that is in Him. He's so ready to pour it out in you. Respect Him. Respect Him. And let Him pour out from Himself into you. Because God is love. Holy Spirit will pour out more of God into you. More of who He is into you. That it will flow in and through and over you. Cup overflowing. God, come and help us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, help us, even guys and people that got hurt with love and when hearing love and intimacy. 
God, people that were disappointed even with leaders, with brothers, with sisters, with spouse, with children, with parents. God, bring us healing. We trust you for that healing, Lord, in Jesus' name. If you really got hurt and disappoint, disappointed with love, just where you are, every, every eye closed, just raise your hand. I want to pray for you, a special prayer for healing. God, I pray for every man, every woman raising their hands. I pray that you will so, in a special, special way, come and touch them. Come and touch them. Come and touch them in a very special way, Lord. I trust you for that. That you will reveal yourself to them this week in a very, very intense, special way. Thank you that you come and you do that. And you touch them. And you challenge them. And you will surprise them with the love that you have for them that you're going to reveal in your way to them. Let it be so. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name and that name alone. And all say, Amen, Amen.